Welcome back to another Blender tutorial and today I've got something aimed a little bit more at beginners but I'm going to be showing you how to model a simple screw. Now this might not look like a very um, useful tutorial, maybe a little bit basic, a little bit boring, but the principle of making a screw is really useful because it can also allow you to make things like springs and other things that need these iterative little um, bendy things that go up on a stack that might be hard to model. For example, like the threads on a screw because they have an offset. It's not exactly something that you could model by hand very easily. So I'm going to show you how to use Blender screw modifier and make this relatively intricate object very, very quickly and very easily and show you how you can do the same thing to make a spring or anything that run, runs on the same kind of stacked curve, stacked angle principle, if you will, like these little threads that are stacked on top of each other. So if this is something you'd like to learn, uh, keep watching and I'll show you step by step how to do it in Blender. With a new scene open in Blender, let's just select all of the default objects and hit X and just delete them. Okay, so we want a nice empty scene to get started with. We're gonna go Shift A on our keyboard. We're gonna go to our mesh primitives and let's just add in a circle. Now we're not gonna be using the whole circle. All we're gonna simply do is tab into edit mode and we're just gonna select the circle to our left or, or the vertex to our left. So just this one vertex. Now make sure if you go to your top view, okay, it's actually this one here. So hit seven to go to your top orthographic view, or you can just go to view, viewport, and then go to top, okay? So in your top view, just select this vertex and then go control A, so, con sorry, control I or command I. That's gonna inverse the selection, select everything else, and you're gonna hit X and then just delete those verts. So the only vert you have is this one right here that should sit right on this X red line here. Okay, so the red axis line. You can see it right there. Now we're gonna tab out into object mode and you can see we just have one pointer, which isn't very interesting. But if we now go over to our modifiers and we go over to add modifier, we're gonna come down and we're gonna select the screw modifier. You can see over here, looks like a screw, so we're just gonna click on it. And you can see it's made a full circle here. Now, if you tab into edit mode, the only thing you can actually select and edit is that vertex there. The rest is just being generated by the screw modifier. Now, if we go back into edit mode and we have this vertex active, we can now go E to extrude and then hit Z to restrict it to the Z axis. And let's just bring it up a little bit. Let's just say about that much, okay? Just for an example. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to the screw, right? Now this meter amount determines how much the screw goes up by, right? So let's just, for example, let's just make it 0.8, okay? So 0.8, you can see that's what we have. Um, what I'm going to do actually, I'm just going to grab this vertex at the top. I'm going to go G, Z, and just bring it up till they touch. Okay, roughly about there. And now you can see we actually have the screw part. Now what we have to come here to is the iteration. And the iteration will essentially just be the amount of times it uses this offset and stacks it on top, right? So this would be something that would be tricky to model. But with the screw modifier, it kind of does it for you in this cool kind of way. So what we can do now is we can just select both these verts. We're gonna right click and we're just gonna click on subdivide and that's just gonna subdivide it to one. So if we now select this middle vertex, as you can see there, we can go G and we can go X and move it out in the X and look at that. Now we have a screw, right? Now this is very basic, but you can also hit A to select everything again. You can right click and go subdivide and then you can just select these two new verts like this, and you can go G, X, and move them back a bit. Now you can create a little bit more of that sort of effect that you see here, right? So there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but the main thing is that you just create the actual little bit here, the little bit of geometry that you have to edit. So essentially that's all you really have to work with, and the modifier does the rest. So this is very powerful, because it allows you to make very quick changes by just quickly coming in here and moving these around. Now let's just leave it at that and go back into object mode. Now all you have to determine is how tall you want your screw. So let's just go with something like 12 iterations. Now there is a million different types of screws out there, literally. So you can, um, you have really long screws for different applications, like ceiling screws, for example. You have really short ones for putting in like flat boards and stuff. So um, just determine what kind of screw you're looking for, for whatever scene you're working on. So let's just go with 12, okay? I think 12 for this is a good example number. Maybe, maybe 14. I'll make mine 14. Okay, but around there is good. Now we're gonna notice here 
there is a little bit of a gap here, which is going to be an issue if we add other modifiers. So one thing we can do is go into edit mode and just select the top vertex here. And we can go G, Z, and just slightly move it up, just tiny, tiny bit till they're kind of touching and that gap looks close. But don't worry if it's not close, because what we're going to do now is we're going to go to add modifier, and now we're going to go and get the weld. And now you can see that line just disappears. It's welding all of that together for us. And look, at that's all now one piece. So let's come to our screw modifier and let's apply it. And let's come to our weld modifier and apply that. So what that means now, if we tab into edit mode, this is no longer being generated by a modifier. It is now one piece of geometry that's all intact and together. Look at that. Imagine if you had to model that um, by hand, how hard it would be, but this just does it all for us. Pretty cool. So now you're probably wondering, cool, we made the screw part. How do you actually make the rest of it? So that's really simple. Okay, it might look complicated, but it's not. So what we're going to do, I'm going to start by coming down here and we're going to select all of these verts here. So holding and shift, you select these ones here, the three bottom ones. And then holding and shift still, we're going to select the last one, which is in the corner there. I'm going to hit F3 and it's going to come up with a search bar. I'm going to type in merge and I'm going to go merge at last. Now what it's doing is essentially the vertex that we last selected, the last active vertex is going to be the one it merges all of that to. Now it looks a bit of a mess, but don't worry about that too much. We'll fix that in a minute. So deselect and I'm going to go shift alt and then just click on an edge down here and it's going to loop select all of these guys like so. And now it, this might be a little bit tricky, but just go S and then Z and restrict the scaling to the Z a little bit. And then we're going to go E to extrude and Z and bring it down like so. Then we're going to go S, Z and flatten it on the Z a little bit. S, Z, flatten it. You can also just go S, Z, zero and it'll zero it out on the Z. But I'm just going to go like this and I'm going to go S to scale it a bit. And then G, Z, bring it down, S to scale. And all I'm doing is just making a point like this. So you can make your screw as pointy as you want. And then with all of those active, you can just hit F to fill them and scale it really small, or you can just merge all of those verts. I'm just gonna go with that for now, because that looks okay. So now you can see we have that part. Now, if you wanted to, to make it a little bit more accurate, you can select these verts down here and hit G twice and just move them in a bit. Double G, just slide them just so it have, has kind of like a little bit of a taper that comes around. Now look at different screws. Different screws have this more defined in different ways, but just look at some references. Um, really depends on the screw you're making, but something like that is about right. Okay, so you can see that's a very easy way of making a screw. Now the rest is pretty simple as well. Same kind of idea. We're gonna come here to the top, select this, this vertex, holding and shift, select these four, and then this one last, the so last one in the corner. Then hit F3, and once again, Type in merge and then go to at last and it's la merging it to that last selected active vertex. Then we're going to go shift alt and click on an edge over here. It's going to loop select these and then we're going to go E to extrude and Z and move it up. And then S, Z and flatten that on the Z like so. And now we can go shift alt and S and just round it out just a little bit if it needs it. So shift alt and S. And now we can go E to extrude, S to scale, make the head as big as you want, and then G, Z, move it up a bit, and then E to extrude, and then Z to scale it up, and then E to extrude, S to scale, just a little bit, and then we're gonna go Control F, with all of these still selected, these vertex still active, we're gonna go Shift, or sorry, we're gonna go Control F, and we're gonna go Grid Fill. And you can come here to the grid fill option and you can mess around with the offset to turn that around. So what we want to do is go to our top view and we just want to make sure that this offset down here lines up straight. So we got a nice 90 degree line up here as you can see there. And that's it. So if you wanted to deselect that now, all you have to do is select these verts here and go G, X, just move them down a bit. Same with these ones. And what I like to do, just to make a really simple little screw part, I just come and go to my face select. I just select all of these inward faces here. These, these guys here. And I just go I to inset them a little bit. And then E to extrude and Z and extrude them down. Scale them just a tiny bit. And that's it. That's how I make my really, really basic screw. Now, if you're going to really be seeing this up close and you really want a lot of detail, go ahead and add extra details. But just this basic 
method here can produce this result really, really quickly and it saves you a lot of modeling using modifiers. So let's quickly make it look a little bit nicer by adding some more modifiers. So I like to add a bevel modifier and I'm gonna come here to the segments and I'm gonna bump it up to free and all that's doing is adding a nice little bevel to certain places. But if the angle isn't quite right, you can come here to the angle and you can mess around a bit till you get the kind of results that you like. Something like that looks cool. And then let's add a subdivision surface modifier on top of that. Okay, so that's looking actually pretty cool. So that's how you make a really cool, simple little um, screw. And I hope you guys have seen the importance of using the sort of screw modifier technique. Also with the screw modifier, you can use the exact same technique to make something like springs. I'll quickly give you an example here. If we just did the exact same thing, you go into edit mode, just isolate one vert. I'll quickly show you how you can make a spring. Just give it that same mirror mod or screw modifier. Extrude it, give it an offset, and then give it some more iterations. And then you can simply just extrude those verts out along the X, and then give it a subdivision surface modifier. And now you have a nice, simple little spring. It really is actually that easy. And all you have to do here is mess around with the segments. How easy is that? So I hope you guys have enjoyed this screw tutorial. It was more aimed at beginners, but it's showing you how to take a relatively complicated object that would be hard to maybe model and do it very simply with a modifier. I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial and thank you for watching.